everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to ISO Custom. Today's video is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a scuba crepe. So it has this nice texture on one side, smooth on the other. It has stretch across the fabric, perfect for a dress like this and on to the cutting out. This is my back. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, the usual sleeve notches and a notch for my zip, and now to mark that dart. So popping a pin in at each of its points and then marking where that pin pierces the fabric on both sides. So that's those all marked. Now to draw in those dart legs. And ready to pin. Starting at the centre, matching up those two dots and then popping a pin in through that top chalk line, out through the bottom and back up through again. And ready to sew. Leaving a tail at the start, stitching directly through those chalk lines, a little curve at the centre, I don't want to have a jagged edge there, and pulling my thread to finish. I'll tie off those threads and press that dart, and this is how it looks. I've also ran my edges through the overlocker just to finish them off and now I'm ready to close up that centre back seam. So laying one piece over the other, my fabric is right sides together and I'm going to stitch from the top of the slit to that zip knot you seen me mark earlier with a regular stitch length and then from there to the neckline with the longest stitch length on my machine. Starting with a back stitch coming up to my zip notch, back stitching again, increasing my stitch length and continuing right the whole way up to the neck. So I just need to press that seam open and now I'm ready for my zip. So I'm using here a standard concealed zip and I'm just lining up the zipper teeth right in the centre of that seam and I'm going to hand tack that into place. So stitching through the zip, stitching through the seam alliance using long tacking stitches. So that's both sides complete. So now that I have my zip tacked into place, I can remove those machine tacking stitches. So using my seam ripper here, I'll finish that off camera. And although this method of zip installation has a few steps to it, for me, it's super straightforward and more importantly, super accurate. So that completes the preparation. Now to sew, and for this one I'm using my concealed zipper foot. It has a little groove along the bottom that the zip teeth slide through, helping to get the needle as close to the teeth as possible. Taking this nice and gently the whole way up, backstitching to start and backstitching to finish. So that's one side complete. Of course I'll do exactly the same on the other. And this is the result. I just need to remove those hand tacking stitches. Very happy with this. So to finish the zip, I just want to add one more little piece of facing. So I've cut myself a rectangle of lining fabric and I'm just placing it here on one side 
and ready to sew. So stitching at about half of my seam allowance through the lining fabric, through the zipper fabric and seam allowance on one side underneath. And this is just going to provide a barrier between my skin and the zip, making this for a super comfortable dress. So that just needs one final press and that completes my zip installation. So now this piece is ready to be joined to my front at the shoulders. So I have one layer of fabric underneath my pattern piece this time and I have notches to mark my dart legs, the usual sleeve notches and a notch at the centre of the neck. And then just like I did on the back, I'm marking all of the points of my darts with pins. Now to draw in my dart legs, lining my ruler up with those notches and where the pin pierces the fabric. That's that done. Ready to pin. So for the bust starts, I'm just lining up my notches, popping a pin through the top chalk line, out through the bottom, and back up through again. And I'll pin the waist starts in exactly the same way as I did the back. And ready to sew. Starting with the bust start, back stitching, following my chalk lines and pulling my threads to finish. And then for the waist starts, following the same steps as I did before, leaving myself a tail at the top and bottom, curving my stitches at the centre. And just like before, I'll tie off my threads and press those darts. And this is the result. So now this piece is ready for its overlays. I have one layer of fabric underneath my pattern piece, a couple of notches, which will help when I come to place my little clasp later on. And I'm cutting this piece out in that scuba crepe fabric and also in lining. So the first thing to do here is to join these two pieces together right along that curve. My fabric is right sides together and I'm going to stitch from my side seam up to my notch. I'm going to leave a little gap there and continue right up to the shoulder. Starting with a back stitch at my one centimeter seam alliance, back stitching again at that first notch, moving my fabric along, back stitching and continuing as I say up to the shoulder. So I just need to clip my curve and press my seam. So folding right along the seam line and clipping out little triangles. And now pressing the lining fabric away from the overlay but making sure that that seam allowance in underneath is butted up against it. and ready to understitch. So I'm stitching through the lining fabric, through that trim seam alliance in underneath, and I'm about a millimeter or two away from that scoop of fabric. Sewing right up to that first notch, moving my fabric forward and continuing up to the shoulder. And once that's had a good press, this is how it looks. And I've also given myself a nice crease line on both the lining and scuba fabric between my notches. That will help me out on the next step, which is to add my clasp. 
so I'm using this little circular purl number and I'm just lining it up with my notches, folding the scuba fabric over the bar and then from the inside pulling that seam allowance through. And I'm just going to run a few hand stitches right along those crease lines. And I'm using quite a strong hand stitch here. I want to make sure that this stays in place. I'll finish that off camera and this is how it looks. Super happy with this. So now that my curve is all understitched and my clasp is in place, I'm ready to join the lining to the scuba around that outer edge. Sewing within my seam allowance using a little bit of a longer stitch length and this is just going to help prevent these two fabrics from shifting around when I'm trying to pull together this dress. So that just needs one final press and that's the first of my two overlays complete. Now for the second piece. So I have one layer of both scuba and lining fabric underneath my pattern piece and to indicate where my fabric goes through my clasp I have a couple of notches. So the first thing to do here is to join these two pieces together along that straight edge. My fabric is right sides together, stitching here at my 1cm seam alliance, back stitching to start and backstitching to finish. Now just like I did before I need to prep this piece for understitching. So I'm just pressing the lining fabric along with its seam alliance in underneath away from the scuba fabric and I'm stitching through the lining, through the seam alliance in underneath, about a millimetre or two away from the scuba. So that's my straight edge all prepped, now for the top and bottom edges. So laying my fabric right sides together and ready to stitch. And I'm doing this in two stages because it allows me to get that front edge understitched from top to bottom. So that's one side sewn. I'll do the other side off camera. And I've also clipped my curves, pressed my lining fabric away from the scuba. And here just running that seam understitching right along the lining. And what this understitching is doing is helping the lining fabric to stay nicely tucked away in underneath. So that's my straight edge and my top and bottom all sewn and understitched. Now to join these two pieces together along that outer edge. So just like before, sewing within my seam alliance. I'll give that a final press. And now this piece along with my first side of my overlay is ready to be joined to my front. So I'm laying them wrong side of overlay to right side of dress front. Lining up my shoulders, my side seams and armholes. And ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, sewing within my seam alliance. I'm just tacking these into place for now. And finishing with a back stitch. That's one side sewn on. I'll do the other off camera, and here's how they look. I've also ran my side seams through the overlocker just to finish them off 
and I'll just pop that right hand piece through the clasp and that will give me a rough idea of how the end result will be. Happy with that, so now this piece is ready to be joined to my back at the shoulders. My fabric is right sides together and stitching here at my 1cm seam alliance. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I'll finish off those edges and press out those seams and this is how it looks. And now that that's done, I want to stabilise the neckline and for this dress I've decided to use the selvage edge of my lining fabric. This will stop my neckline from stretching out but won't add too much bulk, which I like. So stitching here about a millimetre or two inside my seam allowance. Back stitching to start and to finish. So I'll trim off that excess fabric and press and this is how it looks. So now that that's done I'm ready for my facing. So I have one notch to mark the V in my front facing. No notches in my back. So now to join these together. So laying the back over the front, matching up my shoulder seams and stitching at my 1cm seam alliance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I'll give that seam a press. I'll also run the outer edge through the overlocker just to tidy it up and now this piece is ready to be joined to my front. My fabric is right sides together and I've made sure to move my overlays out of the way to open up my zip at the back and ready to stitch. Starting at that centre back with the back stitch, sewing through the facing, through the zipper tape and the seam allowance underneath, little pivot at the top and then following the neckline the whole way along, making sure when I get to the V at the front I'm being really careful that my last stitch is right on the edge of that notch and back up the other side. Taking it nice and gently over those zipper teeth and finishing with the back stitch. Off camera I shall trim down that seam alliance, press the facing away from the bodice in preparation for understitching, which is what I'm doing here, just in exactly the same way as I did before. And as I mentioned before, this understitching is just helping the facing to lie nice and neat and tucked away in underneath. To further help that, I want to stitch it down right along the shoulder seams. So I'm going to stitch in the ditch. So placing my needle right in the centre of that shoulder seam, catching the facing in underneath, starting and finishing with the back stitch. And if I've done this correctly, you shouldn't be able to see my stitches here happy with that. So I've given the whole neckline a good press. So now that that's done I'm ready to close up my side seams. So laying one over the other right sides together and stitching here at my 1cm seam alliance. Starting and finishing with the back stitch. I'll press my seams open and this is how they look. And off camera I've mitered my corners and pressed up my hem, ready for hand stitching. So I'm just running a herringbone stitch right along the edge of the hem, 
So picking up a little bit of fabric from the skirt and then add a diagonal up to the slit, add a diagonal back down to the skirt and repeating. I'll do that the whole way around the hem and this is the result. Happy with that. So now that my side seams are all closed up and my hem is finished, I'm ready for my sleeves. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. The usual sleeve notches around the sleeve head. And the first thing to do here is to close up that underarm seam. So laying one side over the other, right sides together, and stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching to start, and back stitching to finish. So I'll finish my edges and press that seam, and this is how it looks. And now that that's done, I'm ready for my little tulip piece that will sit along the bottom. So I have four layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, and I'm cutting this same one out again in four layers of lining. So the first thing to do here is to join two of my little tulip pieces together along the underarm seam. My fabric is right sides together. I'll do exactly the same thing with my lining and stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance. Back stitching to start and finish. I've pressed open my seams on both pieces and now that that's done, I can join these two together along that bottom curve. My fabrics are right side together. And stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance. So now, just like I did on my overlays before, I want to understitch here. So I've prepped my fabric in exactly the same way. Trim down that seam alliance, press my lining and trim seam alliance away from the scuba. And I'm just running that line of understitching about a millimetre or two away from the scuba fabric. So that's had a good press. And now that that's done, I'm ready to join the lining to the scuba around that outer edge. So just like I did on the overlays before, I'm stitching within my seam alliance, just to hold these two pieces together and make it a lot easier for me to join them to the sleeve. So that's had a good press, so now to make that tulip shape. So I'm just folding one side over the other, matching up my edges and pinning into place. Ready to stitch. So again, stitching within my seam alliance, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that's at a press, and now it's ready to be joined to the bottom of my sleeve. Lining up my edges and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance. Starting and finishing with a back stitch. So I'll finish off those edges and press out those seams, and this is how it looks. So that completes my sleeve, now to add it to my dress. So lining up my underarm seams, my front notch, back notch, and shoulder seam. I'll 
pop in a few more pins off camera and ready to stitch. Starting at the underarm seam, stitching at my 1cm seam allowance, taking this nice and gently, trying to avoid any little wrinkles in my fabric and finishing with a back stitch. So I ran those edges through the overlocker and pressed and this is how they look. And with that, this little dress is complete. So I have my asymmetric neckline with those gorgeous overlays, that lovely pearl clasp, got my sleeves all in place with those gorgeous tulip shapes at the bottom, got my shaping with those waist and bust starts, that lovely hand stitched hem, and from the back, my zip right down that centre back seam along with its facing, my neckline all faced, and then that gorgeous little slit at the bottom. And this is how it looks on. So I'm over the moon with how this has turned out. I love all of the details. Those sleeves, absolutely love those. That little tulip shape at the bottom, gorgeous. The overlays with that little pearl clasp. I think it just gives an extra bit of detail to what is essentially a really basic shift dress. I love the length of the skirt. I absolutely love how comfortable this dress is to wear. This scuba crepe fabric with that bit of stretch across its width. So nice. Love this one. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks!